Do pets go to heaven? There is a lot of debate about whether pets go to heaven or not. Each side using verses to make their arguments and opinions with as much certainty as they can. Let me begin by saying that I personally put biblical topics into three different categories. First are the topics that I haven't fully researched, that I may have vague opinions about, but I avoid taking a strong stand. Second, the Bible tells us that we, quote, understand in part, we prophesy in part, and we see through a glass dimly in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 9 through 12. In other words, many things in Scripture are not totally clear, even if we research them as much as possible. Therefore, there is room for opinion and spiritual growth. The third category is topics that I have researched and feel that there is a need to be bold in declaring. In fact, most topics in Scripture have a definite point of truth worthy of study and research, and once these topics are studied and understood, we have a responsibility to declare them with boldness for other people to see. Nevertheless, in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 25, we find an example of the Apostle Paul giving his opinion. Listen to what Paul says. Now concerning virgins, I have no command of the Lord, but I give my opinion as one by the Lord's mercy is trustworthy. Here Paul was not stating that everyone's opinion is equal and truth is relative to whatever people want to think. But rather, as Paul points out in the verse, that we aren't dealing with just anyone's opinion, but the opinion of one who is led by the Spirit of God and by God's mercy is trustworthy in his opinion. Of course, this verse isn't talking about whether pets go to heaven or not, and in a minute we will get to that topic, but this example will be helpful in understanding how opinions aren't always the best option for a passage. While in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 25 is one place that seems to give room for opinions, Paul usually is overwhelmingly bold in stating biblical truths without exception. When he declares that the Gentiles are accepted by God and that circumcision is no longer necessary, he doesn't mince words. He doesn't say, this is my opinion, you might agree and you might not agree and that's okay. Instead, he said such things as, oh foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you with your opinion? The word opinion is not there, but it's in Galatians chapter 3, verses 1 through 3, and basically that's what he's saying, oh foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you into thinking this? He also said regarding those who tried to debate with his teachings, with their opinions, such things as, For such ones are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13. So as a pastor and theologian, and one who takes my calling by God seriously, and who has the experience of being trustworthy, I don't hesitate to declare truth that I have discovered through research and study, even if it isn't accepted by many. Some of my YouTube videos demonstrate a boldness on topics that some people are not willing to address because they don't want to lose their jobs or be rejected by their family. Check out my series on God's love for the LGBTQ community to see what I mean. Now let's get to the question, do pets go to heaven? Like the topic of what the Bible says and doesn't say about those who are LGBTQ, I have studied extensively what the Bible says about pets going to heaven. However, while I have demonstrated in my videos that the Bible does not condemn those who are LGBTQ+, and have declared that point boldly and clearly, I have discovered something different about the topic regarding pets going to heaven. Here is one of those topics where 1 Corinthians 13 verse 12 is really helpful. We understand in part and we see through a glass dimly. Let me explain. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 21 in its original language is best translated as who is able to say that the spirit of man goes up and the spirit of animals go down. In other words no one can say with certainty that the spirit of man goes up and the spirit of animals go down. Why? Apparently because the Bible doesn't make the point clear. 
Nevertheless, in the same way that the Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 25, I am giving my opinion as a man led by the Spirit of God. I will share my opinion as a man led by the Spirit of God. Not that I am in any way on the level that the Apostle Paul, but following in his example. Just as Paul said, now concerning virgins, I have no commandment of the Lord, yet I give my opinion as one who has obtained mercy from God. I will say, now concerning whether pets go to heaven or not, I have no direct definite statement from the Lord, yet I give my opinion as one who has obtained mercy as God has led me with his spirit. First, I find it interesting that the author of Ecclesiastes felt it necessary to say something to the order of, who do you think you are saying that the spirit of man goes up and the spirit of animal go down? How do you know? It seems to me that for him to write that, it must have been a question even back then. It also seems to me that there must have been some who were declaring that pets do not go to heaven. Otherwise, why would anything have been written about it? On the other hand, why didn't the author of Ecclesiastes give us an answer one way or the other? After all, the author of Ecclesiastes was most likely King Solomon, who was known to be given more wisdom by God than anyone else. Did Solomon know the answer and not share it? Did he not know the answer? Or was it kind of like the story of threatening to divide a baby in half was a sign of wisdom that revealed who the true mother was? Who knows? But it does seem that his answer was leaning more toward rebuking those who were probably claiming that pets do not go to heaven. Unfortunately, that isn't always clear in the modern translations. For whatever reason, the author didn't tell us one way or the other, rather simply demonstrated that we understand in part and we see through a glass dimly. But that doesn't mean that there isn't sufficient evidence throughout Scripture to lead us to an opinion based on, as Paul said, mercy obtained from God. For those of the opinion that pets do not go to heaven, part of their argument is that Number one, either animals don't have a soul, which in a minute I will demonstrate that they do, or animals have a soul, but not the same kind of soul that humans have. On that issue, let's be clear. There are two words in Hebrew that are translated soul. They are nefesh and rauk. And both of these words are used interchangeably in the Old Testament for both humans and animals. Still, some scholars who know this still argue that while the same words are used interchangeably for both humans and animals, there is a difference between the soul of humans and the soul of animals, in that animals can't decide to accept or reject Jesus, and humans can because we are made in the image of God and animals are not. But wait, the Bible is clear that those who are saved are saved by Jesus and not by any other name. Nevertheless, most Christians believe that some will be saved by Jesus who had never heard of him. Paul said as much in Romans chapter 2 verse 14 when he wrote, quote, For when the Gentiles who do not have the law by nature do the things contained in the law, these all, though not having the law, are a law unto themselves. Also consider Romans chapter 8 verse 19 that says, For all creation eagerly awaits the redemption of the sons of God, for we know that all creation groans and travails in pain together. End quote. This verse is saying that in some way, all creation looks forward to heaven, not just humans. Just because our minds can't comprehend and understand that or explain how all creation groans doesn't mean that it isn't true. Also consider Philippians chapter 4 verse 7 that tells us the peace of God transcends understanding. Listen, folks, there are a lot of things that transcend our understanding. And that's because Deuteronomy 29.29 29 says, The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but those things that are revealed belong to us and our children forever. End quote. 
Therefore, so far we have evidence that implies that pets might very well go to heaven. Since, number one, no one can say that the spirit of men goes up and the spirit of animals go down. Number two, both Hebrew words that are translated as spirit or soul, nefesh and rauk, are used interchangeably for both humans and animals. And number three, not just humans, but all of creation are, quote, eagerly awaiting redemption and groaning and travailing until then. All of creation somehow is experiencing that. But wait, there's even more. Not only did God create the animals and give them to Adam to name and to care for, the Bible is full of examples of God's love for animals, such as Matthew chapter 10, verses 29 through 31, where we are told that God knows every sparrow that falls. Sparrows are one of the most common birds on earth, yet God cares enough to be aware of each one that falls to the ground. Psalm 36, verses 6 and 7, says of God, Your righteousness is like the mighty mountains, your justice like the ocean depth. You care for people and animals alike. O oh Lord, how precious is your unfailing love, O oh God! If God's righteousness cares for people and animals alike, how can we say that pets can't go to heaven because God's righteousness can't cover them? Proverbs 12, verse 10 says, A righteous man has regard for the life of his animal, but even the compassion of the wicked is cruel, end quote. Wow! If Proverbs says that a righteous man has regard for his animals, how can we say that a righteous God doesn't? Furthermore, if Proverbs tells us that the, quote, compassion of the wicked is cruel, how can we see a compassionate God being cruel and not allowing our favorite pets to be with us in heaven? I will share one more example, though I believe I could find many more. It's related to the last one. You see, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 11, If man knows how to give good gifts, how much more does your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? God does not withhold any good thing from those who accept salvation in His Son, Jesus Christ. Those of us who go to heaven because we have accepted the sacrifice of Christ should not have to worry about whether or not our favorite pet will be with us. There is no evidence in Scripture that declares that animals do not go to heaven. And while there is also no evidence in Scripture that declares that animals do go to heaven, the author of Ecclesiastes in the original Hebrew language of the Old Testament wrote, Who are you to say that they don't? And we can find countless examples of God's love for animals and countless examples of compassion for animals like that of humans. With these points discovered through God's Word, as the Apostle Paul said, quote, While I don't have a clear statement from the Lord, it is my opinion as a theologian that animals are not prevented from going to heaven. In my opinion as a theologian, those of us who go to heaven should not have to worry if our favorite pet will be allowed to come with us at the resurrection. Therefore, if you are a believer looking forward to eternity when Jesus comes, and if you have pets that you want to see again in heaven, there seems to be no reason to worry about whether or not they will be there with you. Be at peace. When you say goodbye to your beloved pet, look forward to petting them again in heaven. I hope this helps. And if you like this video, click on the like button and leave me a comment. And if you have not subscribed to my channel yet, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell and choose all to make sure that you get a notification the next time that a video is produced. God bless. I'll see you in the next video.